It feels like I just finished up a ton of visual novel stuff just in the House in Fate and Morgana's Vita version, but here I am diving into another. Why? Because it has romance elements and, well, that's pretty much enough to get me interested. It also has some nice folklore, horror, and mystery elements thrown into the mix, so icing on the cake. But let's get out of that and get right into it. Here is my review of World End Syndrome for the Nintendo Switch. In this game, you play as a 17-year-old boy trying to escape from a troubled past by moving to a small town known for its folklore. Not long after moving there, though, he and the rest of the club that he joins at school find themselves involved in a bit of a mystery case with a string of deaths happening in the town that some people are blaming on a legend where the dead come back to life and cause misfortune. So you end up spending your summer vacation finding more out about all of these deaths and the legends, but also developing your relationships with your classmates, both to be friends and to be something a little bit more. Now I kind of like this story for its folklore and the fact that you have a bunch of different routes for the different girls and different romantic endings. I've always liked visual novels with romance elements that allow you to choose who you want to pursue. But the biggest flaw in the game is the fact that the story starts off pretty slow and it takes a while for you to get to the quote unquote real game. Going through the prologue before the actual game starts happening takes a good three to four hours and feels like a visual novel in and of itself. If you can last that long, it gets good after that, but you've got to make that push to get there. When it comes to gameplay, this is like two different visual novels. During the prologue, it's like a typical visual novel where you're just going through story scenes and going through choices. But once you get through the prologue, a lot of new features open up. You still have story scenes and choices that you have to do, but every day you can choose to go to a different location and you meet different characters based off when and where you go. And that ties into a big thing that makes World End Syndrome feel and play a little bit different than other visual novels. In a typical visual novel, you would just alter your choices depending on who you wanted to pursue and what route and ending you wanted. This game is based on replays. Going through the prologue to the end gets its own bad ending that opens up the rest of the game once you reload your save file and a new choice is available to you, and the rest of the game plays pretty much the same. Once you clear the prologue, three of the character endings open up, and you have to go through those three character endings to unlock the other endings towards the end of the game. Now this is a lot to do and you have a lot of different characters to meet on your different playthroughs, but the game does help you out with this that other visual Visual novels don't help out nearly as much. After you start your third playthrough, all of the previous events you've had with characters in different locations on different days will show up on your map. So if you just finish up your Saya playthrough and want to do a Miami playthrough, all of the events you've had with Miami will show up on your map so you're not completely clueless about where you're supposed to go. But now let's get back to that whole replay the game to unlock new character endings feature. This is an interesting thing to have put into a visual novel, but it makes it repetitive and might be a little bit off-putting if you don't like the full cast. That's because the canon and true endings of the game are the last ones that unlock. To get to those endings and see what's actually going on in the story, you have to go through the game for all of the other character routes. So you're going to be going through the main game at least four or five times, assuming you don't screw up, before you can even see the canon and main ending. This this probably wouldn't be too big of a problem if you really like the full cast, but if you really hate one or two of the characters, you can't just skip their routes because you'll never unlock the true ending. But the silver lining of this is the fact that it helps with the game's content and length. By the time I'd play through the prologue and gotten my first ending for our Miami, I'd played the game for a little over 12 hours, and by the time I'd gotten around to the true ending and officially completed the game, I'd been playing for well over 20 hours. Now let's talk about controls for a second, or rather, one specific control. Like other visual novels, you can auto advance and skip text, and that latter feature is especially important because this is based off of replays, so you can skip all of the events that are the same between all routes, so you can just see all the new stuff for that individual character. The problem is that this feature resets after every scene, and sometimes halfway through each scene. So when you're going through the game and trying to get up to all those new events, you're going to be constantly hitting that skip button over and over and over again because it will not stick like it does in other visual novels. It constantly resets itself and turns itself off. Now when it comes to presentation, all of the art is incredibly detailed and there is actually a good amount of animation in the backgrounds for each cutscene. No matter what background you're looking at, something will be moving like trees blowing in the wind or birds flying through the sky. I don't have any complaints about performance, so let's go right into battery life, which, being a visual novel, it has a lot of. World End Syndrome has a battery range of 3 hours and 52 minutes on high settings, up to 5 hours and 41 minutes on low settings. Now in conclusion, World End Syndrome is a visual novel that offers an interesting story about mystery and folklore about the undead. 
Now, the downside of the story does take a while to get itself started, and the fact that you have to go through every character's endings just to see the true ending is a bit repetitive, and some people might not like it if you don't fall in love with the entire cast. But if you can trudge through that three to four hour prologue, you'll find a very interesting visual novel for both horror and mystery fans. Reviews to Go rates World and Syndrome for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.